It was the early morning of February 25th, 1942, and large swaths of the western United States were blacked out due to a potential threat of enemy attack as sirens blared and searchlights pierced the sky. The unsettling silence was soon shattered as the military began to fire at something in the dark skies above. 1,400 anti-aircraft shells were pumped into the air as citizens cowered and spectated with awe. The city remained blacked out until dawn, after which concerned citizens demanded answers. Through a mist of confusion, some would say that it was a massive UFO, perhaps something alien in origin. Others say that there were dozens of enemy aircraft, or that there was nothing at all. Join us here on Mystery Archives as we explore the infamous Battle of Los Angeles and unravel one of history's mysteries as we attempt to discover the unexplained. Just before 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, December 7th, 1941, a surprise attack was launched on the American naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii by the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service. This attack would send shockwaves across the country, and indeed the world, and would result in the United States declaring war on the Empire of Japan the following day. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. What would follow was a gripping sense of fear felt by the entire country, especially those in the western United States. Japanese submarines began to sink ships on a regular basis in coastal waters, and blackouts became a routine. Then, on February 23, 1942, less than three months after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese launched an attack on the U.S. mainland. As the sun set below the horizon, an Imperial Japanese submarine surfaced several miles west of Santa Barbara, California. Shortly after this, the submarine began to mount its cannon and began to open fire, attempting to hit any and all coastal targets it could. The shelling lasted for approximately 20 minutes, and although the damage was minimal and no casualties were reported, the fear of a potential Japanese invasion of the U.S. homeland became all too real within the psyche of the American public. Fearing that the attack on Santa Barbara was simply a diversion, the U.S. military ramped up its state of readiness well into the next day, and on February 24th, around 7 p.m., naval intelligence reported that an attack could be expected somewhere on the west coast within the next 10 hours. Thus, a yellow alert was issued, meaning that an unidentified aircraft had been detected. But just three hours after the yellow alert had been issued, tensions relaxed as the all clear or wide alert was issued. But a state of readiness by the military would continue forward, and a state of anxiety within the public was at an all-time high. The following day, on February the 25th, at approximately 1.44 a.m., three separate radar stations picked up an unidentified flying object approaching the city of Los Angeles. By 2 a.m., the UFO was roughly 300 miles away from the mainland. At this point, alerts were issued, and anti-aircraft artillery were placed on green alert and were ready to be fired. 25 minutes later, the object was detected within 8 miles of the city of Los Angeles, and the city was blacked out. As the sound of alarms began to fill the air, and the tensions among the military and civilians alike began to grow, the UFO was just two miles outside of the city, and it disappeared from the radar. 
massive amounts of phone calls ranging from enemy aircraft to flying saucers being reported began to flood the information centers, and at 3.07 a.m. the military was given order to open fire, and from this point onward, the darkened skies above Los Angeles were lit up with exploding shells. The firing soon became sporadic and disorganized as a variety of targets were reportedly seen all over the city. The reports deemed credible at the time ranged from a lone enemy fighter and a fleet of more than 200 enemy bombers, and yet other equally credible witnesses claimed that there was no aircraft at all. And among the confusion, there were other credible reports that the craft or crafts witnessed above Los Angeles that night were not of this world. One woman described what the military was shooting at as a massive ship. It was just enormous. I had never seen anything like it in my life. And although the city remained blacked out until dawn, the shelling itself ceased roughly around 4 a.m., with approximately 1,400 shells being fired into the night sky. As dawn broke, a flurry of conflicting newspaper reports began to come hot off the press. One report was that of a local police sergeant who claimed that he saw two planes fall towards southern Los Angeles by the illumination cones of the searchlights. However, another report was released by the military claiming that nothing but shell shrapnel had been recovered and that no bombs had been dropped and no planes had been downed. To add to the confusion even more, no one could seem to agree on a general consensus as to what really happened that night. With the agony of World War II finally coming to an end, the almost all but forgotten mystery of what happened that morning back in 1942 was suddenly flung back into the spotlight. Through a series of declassified documents, it was discovered that an investigation had been conducted by the military and it had been ascertained that between one and five unidentified flying objects had been spotted above Los Angeles that morning. As to what the craft were, still remained a mystery. Japan claimed that it had not sent any aircraft near Los Angeles on that date, and was subsequently ruled out. And if the planes had been commercial or civilian aircraft, why was no debris ever supposedly recovered? This discovery once again opened the door to speculation and conspiracy. In 1948, a former Army Air Force major and college professor by the name of William A. Goss thoroughly investigated the matter on behalf of the United States Air Force. He was given access to all military records available at the time and came to the conclusion that meteorological or weather balloons had been to blame. Within the military's records on the matter, Goss had discovered that three majors had testified that the shelling had been provoked at the spotting of a large balloon-like object. These testimonies were later corroborated by additional military witnesses who had released a balloon just hours prior to the event taking place. Although the official word from the military at the time was that they refused to comment on whether or not the object or objects had been weather balloons or blimps. Although this theory does have some credibility given Goss's research, it does pose a few difficult questions. Why did the military open fire on a balloon they themselves sent into the sky? This could have simply been because of a lack of communication amongst officials, but why would they release an aerial craft such as this with tensions being so high, assuming they did launch them? How could 1,400 anti-aircraft shells not have struck the object, or at the very least damaged it enough to bring it down and allow for debris to be recovered? It's possible that the balloon was simply too high in the air for the shells to hit it, although the explanation seems unlikely, and if that wasn't the case, then said object would have had to have dodged 1,400 exploding shells, and on top of that, the said balloon was never recovered. It's also possible that it simply could have been incinerated, but considering the size of such a thing, you'd think there would at the very least be a small amount of debris to be recovered if it had been hit. And if it hadn't been hit, then where did it go? A conflicting report made by a local Los Angeles journalist at the time who witnessed the event by the name of Bill Henry 
claimed that not only was the object some sort of ship or craft, but that the military had scored a number of direct hits on it, but to no avail. The following morning after the incident had taken place, this now famous image was published by the Los Angeles Times. It shows a series of searchlights convening on one particular object as anti-aircraft artillery bombards it. But given the lack of clarity, it's almost impossible to see what the object truly is. It could be a plane, a balloon, or even a blimp. Or it could be something not of this world. Considering that the UFO was spotted by three different radar stations prior to the event taking place, but seemed to disappear right before the shelling began, a system malfunction seems incredibly unlikely. Although radar equipment back then was far from what we would consider advanced in the modern day, to have an object appear on three at once and then simultaneously disappear seems very strange indeed. Then there are multiple eyewitness accounts stating that something indeed was visible over the night skies of Los Angeles that evening. With several people claiming that it was some kind of alien craft, unlike anything they had ever seen before. Now it's certainly possible that something flew over the skies that night, that the shelling was born out of nothing other than wartime anxiety, or it had been some sort of weather balloon mistakenly released at such a terrible time, or maybe just maybe, it was something out of this world. With most of those who experienced the event themselves no longer with us, since the mystery is now 79 years in the past, and no additional information coming forward for more than 30 years, it seems unlikely that the mystery of the Battle of Los Angeles will ever be truly solved. But what do you think happened? Do you believe the weather balloon theory? The enemy aircraft theory? Or something else entirely. Perhaps that it was indeed an extraterrestrial craft. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and it truly helps us out when you share this video or any of our videos on social media. This has been Cody here at Mystery Archives. Thank you so much for watching yet another episode of Discover the Unexplained, and until next time, take care.